They're one of the most iconic items in the Star Wars universe, lightsabers. Man, woman, child, or Ewok, if you know about Star Wars, you know all about those super intense warrior monks weapon of choice. The light beam battle blades of Star Wars are, as we all know, incredibly cool. But what do they have to do with gemstones? In the Star Wars universe, lightsabers are powered by these little things called kyber crystals. If you're thinking, hey Natalie, I don't remember anything about lightsaber crystals, don't worry. There's not a lot of detail about them in the live action Star Wars films. In fact, 2016's Rogue One marked the first time they appeared on the big screen. Remember Jin Erso's necklace? Yeah, that's a kyber crystal. The animated series Star Wars Clone Wars goes into a bit more detail about these incredibly important objects. Kyber crystals are found in many planets across that far, far away galaxy, and like a lot of stuff in Star Wars, kyber crystals are attuned to the Force. Kyber crystals are clear, and they stay that way until used by a Jedi. Blue and green are the two most associated colors with the good guys, like Obi-Wan and Luke. But the Sith, who used the powers of the dark side to dominate the crystals, made them bleed, resulting in a very intimidating red color. You underestimate the power of the dark side. And you know Kylo Ren's lightsaber that seemed like it had a glowing guard near the hilt? Well, those are actually vents to release extra energy. His kyber crystal is cracked, making it completely unstable. So, lightsabers are powerful laser-like weapons that use crystals and gemstones as their source of power. Could that actually work in real life? And what gemstones would you use? If you imagine a glowing red crystal, the kind strong enough to power a dark side lightsaber, the first Earth equivalent you probably think of is a ruby. Rubies are basically crystallized forms of aluminum oxide with a few impurities tossed in to give them that amazing red color. This type of gem is called corundum. And hey, here's a fun fact. Sapphire is the exact same mineral, but only if the impurities turn it any other color than red. Green, yellow, your classic blue, all corundum and all sapphires. But a red corundum is always ruby. Some consider to be unnatural. Rubies have an ancient, sacred reputation all over the world. Rubies are mentioned in the Bible and have a long history in India, China, and Southeast Asia as both spiritual and decorative items. Wisdom, beauty, and this one's important, the blood of life are all traits associated with rubies. And guess what? There is such a thing as a ruby laser, but it's probably different from what you're imagining. A ruby laser is a solid state laser, and it does, in fact, give the light a deep red color, but these lasers aren't made from rubies fresh out of the ground. Ruby lasers are synthetic rubies, and synthetic here isn't a synonym for fake. Synthetic rubies have the same components as natural stones. It's a real ruby, it's just made in the lab. Why don't scientists use natural rubies for this? Because making rubies in a lab, they're able to control the gem formation process. Also, lab-grown gems won't have any inclusions, you know, fractures or outside material trapped inside the gemstone. Remember how we mentioned Kylo Ren's cracked crystal? Yeah, you would never want to use a cracked or fractured crystal in a laser. Anything else? Sith sometimes would manufacture synthetic kyber crystals for their lightsabers using a machine called the Geological Compressor. They did this to keep their weapon building a secret from the rest of the galaxy and to make sure they had the most powerful lightsabers ever. But back to Earth, remember how rubies are crystallized forms of aluminum oxide? Well, aluminum oxide is also known as alumina and it's the first thing you need to manufacture a synthetic ruby. But that's not all, you still need to make it red. Since non-red example of corundum is sapphire, chromium oxide is added to the aluminum mixture to give it that final blood red color. Grind all of that into a very fine powder, add some hydrogen, oxygen, and a few thousand degrees Fahrenheit, and ta-da! You've got yourself a ruby rod. Not that ruby rod, way too much science fiction. So you're probably getting excited that maybe lightsabers are real because ruby red lasers are an earthly possibility, but here's where the big giant butt comes in. Lightsabers act nothing like the lasers we here on Earth know and love. For one thing, ruby lasers are pretty weak and they're mostly used for hair, tattoo removal, or cool holographs. So they're not nearly powerful enough to chop off a limb. That being said, there are other lasers powered by gems. Some diamond lasers, for instance, are much more powerful and can literally cut through steel. A diamond laser that cuts through steel seems like something only useful in a James Bond movie, but some scientists actually think powerful diamond lasers could eventually be used for clearing up space debris. By the way, a planet is not debris. That would be using a laser for all Duran reasons. Get it? 
Alderaan. I don't know who you are or where you came from. But here's the thing, laser beams don't glow and they certainly don't project as solids that come to a dead stop a few feet away from their starting points. So even though gemstone powered lasers on Earth may seem lightsaber-ish at first, unfortunately the science of Luke and Leia's universe just doesn't work in ours. And as for the blasters, well, we'll save that discussion for another episode. Has your father ever cut off your hand with a lightsaber? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe. For more information on the topics we discussed today, check out the links below. Thanks for watching.